Hello and welcome to This Week in Property. I'm your host Richard Swan and in today's show we have a fabulous gentleman in the office, gentleman by the name of Mr Robert McFarlane. Robert, welcome. Thank you very much Richard, nice to be here. Nice to be back here because yeah. I know this man. So full disclosure, so you you know there's no shenanigans. I know this fabulous gentleman uh, because we both met through Paul McFadden's Property Protege training program, and he's an incredible character, uh, an amazing journey, so much uh, experience, knowledge, wisdom, strategies, tactics, things that he's seen in the past, things that he's doing just now. Just an amazing gentleman. Helps so many people inside the Protege community as well. Just always learning, always growing, always developing. And it's an amazing man to have, and that's why I wanted you in, Robert, because I want to pull you in and uh, to help these people, you know, folks who are watching, listening just now, you know, knowing your journey, knowing your background, getting to understand kind of things that you do. I think it's going to be fabulous value for them. So I really appreciate. It. I know you've had one hell of a journey. You've been on that train and heading up from the Midlands and crossing the border into uh, Scotland. When you've got that name, you've got the McFarlane name, so you're safe yeah. here. You are protected, but. What's the part of the story before property? Because we're going to get into everything that you've you've done, that you've built, the successes, the challenges, you know, everything we'll talk about, your opinions on the market and what have you, and things you're doing right now. But what was it before that? Because, you know, there's people who are thinking about starting, they're thinking about getting there, but, oh, do I already need to be, a, you know, a plumber and a joiner and then I'll get into property? Do I need to be an architect? And, and there's so many different backgrounds. There's so many different people from different locations. What was things like for you, you know, childhood areas, growing up, coming out of school, etc.? <clears throat> yeah, well, as you say, I'm a, I'm a Midlands lad. Right from the age of 13, mm -hmm. which helps, I always wanted to run my own business. Right. Um, and I actually left school at 16. I didn't carry on for this, that and the other and university. I thought, no, I want right. to earn some money. <laughs> well, and I was thinking, what, what, what business can I start at the age of 16? I was wow. that in, in tents on working for myself and I, I could only think of a window, a window cleaning round and I thought, mm, <laughs> I might not make too much at that. So right. I, I, I did work as a in an office for a couple of years and then I got an opportunity, moved to a place not a million miles from here, Whitley Bay, oh, and, yeah, worked, yeah. and worked in Newcastle as a trainee site office manager for a construction company. We were uh -huh. rebuilding the, uh, the ministry at a place called Long Benton, just outside there. Right. And uh, after a couple of years, the company went bust. And I thought, well, this, this is a good lesson for anybody <laughs> that thinks I've got security yes. working for somebody else because you, you necessarily haven't. That's right. So, um, I sort of did a lot of research and with the help of my late father, mm -hmm. I started a, a waste paper reclamation business. Wow. So basically um, bought a van and was collecting sort of waste waste paper and it was a very profitable business. Really? So yeah. um, that was at the age of 20. So I was like four years late starting, <laughs> started working for, my, there was for a myself. Lag. <laughs> yeah. And then um, I think it was um, in the late 70s, there was a real boom on um, waste paper. There was such a worldwide shortage. So Is that was, right? There was a lot of money made. Uh -huh. But then as sometimes happens, more, more so in stocks and shares and obviously property, there was a bit of a crash in waste paper came. Right. So I luckily saw it coming and got out and uh, sold, sold the business. Fantastic. And then diversely, I've always been, had an interest in uh, turf accountancy, which might be known over the border <laughs> as being a bookie. Yes. So, um, although I say it myself, very good at mental arithmetic and I had, a, had an interest in horse racing, not, not serious that I would be gambling this, right. that and the other, On but the enough end. that I the thought, right oh, there's some, there's some money to be made here. <laughs> so off I... Uh, toddled on the turf accountants course held in wow. the Midlands for a few weeks, came right. out with my big certificate. Yeah. Not quite a bigger certificate as you get at Paul Matt Adam Wealth, <laughs> but it wasn't <laughs> far off. Brilliant. So I thought, right, I'm I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna buy a shop and that's what I did. 
Mm -hmm. um, then basically, uh, I managed to increase and got up to the dizzy heights of six shops, which took some managing. Wow, I'll bet. And then um, I bumped into a guy, Dave, who was who was a bookie, mm -hmm. and by chance he'd taken over this betting shop in Staffordshire and above it was a couple of flats and uh -huh. interestingly he said to me oh bloody hell that favourites won again he said I've had a right bad bad week he said but do you know what he said those two guys up there because we're going back a number of years yeah. they're both giving us 50 quid rent this week he <laughs> said I've got 100 quid right. my missus is over the moon he said if you excuse the pun he said she's told me I'm back in the wrong horse. <laughs> so, so basically, um, he he had the opportunity to buy three houses in a place called Wensbury. Right. This gentleman, he said, to myself and my late wife want to go in with him. We uh -huh. said, yeah, why not? So we remortgaged um, our place. own property right. to to go into the, the deal because he Ooh. couldn't afford the three uh properties sure and then basically what happened i i just it was like a light bulb moment i could see the potential prices right. were very low and it was about networking and making contacts and this that and the other but i'm thinking hang on a minute i'll remortgage the um the house how do we get from a to b uh -huh. i know i'll have to consider selling the betting shops Right. And I had a right stroke of luck. One day, this guy, Tony his name, came into the shop. He would normally put £20 worth of bets on. Um, uh, some weeks he'd get it all back, other weeks he'd lose the lot. That's mm. by the by. Sure. And he come in this one week and he put £2 on. And I said, oh, everything okay, Tony? And I didn't want to be personal sure. as to you know what sort of maybe he was on short time whatever he said nothing against you rob he said but i don't know whether you realize it the new lotteries come out the national lottery and he said i fancy me chances on that he said i've had 20 quid on the lottery and two pound worth of bets with you with the horse and i said thank you very much you've done me a big favor tony the Monday morning, less than 48 hours later, uh -huh. I could see what was happening. Right. I put all my shops up for sale, wow. all, all six of them, wow. because I noticed, and this was the start of it, some people hadn't clocked on, right. there was going to be a dramatic drop in turnover. Yes. So I managed to get out. So I got these six shops, and I was fortunate enough that every time I sold a shop, I bought a house, straight away. sell a oh, shop, brilliant. bought a house. <laughs> so all of a sudden, I'm um, early 40s, eight houses, <laughs> and, and technically retired. That's you. <laughs> that, <laughs> you that's me you've done. done it. <laughs> and fabulous, fabulous wow. six, fabulous six or eight weeks. And then, of course, the novelty wears off. You know, we can't all have all the big holidays like Paul McFadden, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Um, my wife said basically, oh, this is, you must be getting a bit bored now. Why don't we start a letting agency? Good idea that. <laughs> It'll get you from under my feet. <laughs> <laughs> so off I toddled on this letting agency course. Right, in, another course. <laughs> in Yeovil, yeah, in Somerset, <laughs> with a company. Uh, I don't know whether they're too strong in Scotland or not. They're called Martin and Co. Right. Yeah, but they're quite big in England. Right. So again, I went on the sort of lettings course and out with another, another certificate. certificate. Off again. But I must reiterate, it wasn't <laughs> as big as the certificate I'd had on the previous <laughs> course and not as big as the one you get with your own <laughs> Paul McFadden <laughs> prodigy. Because everybody knows that's the biggest and the best. I said, oh dear, I'll need to put an invoice into him for the show, I'll <laughs> so, tell you. Yeah. Wow. So um, away we go. I come back and they give you a lot of ideas how to kick off. Mm -hmm. And like every every business, you've got to start somewhere, but you've got to be sensible. Mm. So we actually ran the business 
from the dining room table. Did you? That's where we started it. Oh, I love it. Put adverts in the paper, because uh -huh. at that time it's hard to believe, but there was no, no estate agent who got a website or anything. Right. We were probably one of the, the first to do it. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Um, if I wanted to go out for a couple of hours on an appointment, uh -huh. um, I just did call divert. So the landline went over <laughs> to call call divert. And what <laughs> what digressing, what was funny about that was we've, we've got a few relations in Scarborough in Yorkshire uh -huh. and we went off there for the weekend and I, and I said to my wife, well, we can't just close the business down. Sure. We'll stick it on to call divert then. I said, oh, okay. Anyway, on the set, Saturday morning, we're on this sea trip and the phone goes and it's this potential client. He said, you are in Stafford, aren't you? That's <laughs> your, where your business is, uh, MD Properties. Uh -huh. I said, yeah, that, that's correct. Oh, only I can hear a lot of seagulls in the background. <laughs> and he said, as far as I know, which is correct, we're one of the farthest points in the country is that from, the, from, from the sea. sea. <laughs> so I, I said, oh, yes, I've, I've, I've just popped out on a bit of a, a, an emergency trip. I'll, I'll be back in Stafford later. Can we make, because it was a potential landlord, I said, oh, I can we, uh, you know, arrange an appointment for sort of Tuesday? Oh, yeah, that, that, that's fine. Thank you very much. Brilliant. And I'm not sure to this day <laughs> knew where we were. That time. <laughs> But, and did he become your first client? Was that just one of the ones uh, you remember? That was one of the ones I re right. remember. Yeah. Um, I think it, in those days, of course, um, which they've been banned now, you could actually charge tenant fees as well. Right. So wow. the way we kicked off the business was we, we rang up um, landlords that had put adverts in papers and saying, look, we can find you a tenant no mm -hmm. charge to yourself right. and vet them out and even those days 29 years ago we were charging i think it was 75 80 quid that sort of thing mm -hmm. just to get a tenant and then we could right. marry the tenant with the the landlord and and sort of build uh, build up a little bit of a, a network yeah um so yeah and then put Fantastic. our own adverts in and then away we go and i then we built it up to the stage that it, it needed a member of staff and right. I said, well, with respect, we can't really have a member of staff sort of in, in the house. The dining so, table. In the dining table, <laughs> yeah. Well, he could have done, but it wouldn't have been very professional. No. <laughs> and at that, at that point, we were getting to the stage where probably landlords were looking perhaps to have a base to come and see me in the, in the office a bit like right. here. Whereas we had managed quite well that if Mr. Joe Bloggs, the landlord, had got a property to let, mm. I could obviously go out to the house. To that, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And if that a tenant sense. wanted to see it, yeah. he would go to the house. So yeah. technically in those days, we didn't really need, need an office. I but see. I felt to get to the next level and have staff, then we did need... Um, an office so mm -hmm. for a number of number of sunday mornings i just used to drive around stafford town center where we're based trying to find an office and by chance i saw a little post-it card in a window office to let or half an office as it was and i rang up and uh, we took it and then the guy i think he was an insurance broker he retired, so we had the other bit of his his ah, office gotcha. and waved him away. Uh -huh. um, we're currently trying to find somewhere bigger, but as 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 we speak, I think 20, 23, 24 years on, we're still in that same office. Wow, fantastic! Yeah. What a story, man! The whole the whole explosion of it all, you know, just steadily building up. And I was picking up so many threads here. I love the fact you you had that. You always seem to have this, this awareness thing, because you, you were speaking a few times there about, well, I got this, and that was a clear, clear lesson about, you know, I didn't have full control and security of working for someone else. And then I seen that guy talking about the lottery thing, so I could see ahead. So you're obviously very good at that, seeing things. But you also mentioned, I mean, there was an amazing variety there with the, with the waste paper and the betting shops, and now it's this property magnet that's getting born out of something. But you mentioned right at the start, when you were 13, 
I knew I wanted my own business. And it wasn't, I don't like school, I want to go and get a job. It wasn't that. You clearly said I wanted my own business. I want to build something for myself. It wasn't quite clear what it was, blah, blah, blah. Do you know where that came from at all? I mean, you mentioned yeah. your late father. Did he have a kind of entrepreneurial um, background? Or? With, with, with respect to my late father, he didn't. He was a, no. what they call a jig and fixtures tool making engineer. Right. The inspiration came actually from my uh, uncle, who ah. was based in uh, Swansea, and he'd actually got a cafe business and a, and a news agent. Oh, wow. And I, I was just intrigued listening to him and... Brilliant. how he ran his businesses and I thought this is for me this and I went down and a couple of summer holidays in Swansea working in in the business and right I, just seeing yeah, things just seeing how how it runs and how his mind sort of works yeah and then um but yeah That's right, right from 13 I thought other people were like, oh, let's stop on and do A-levels. Let's go yeah. to university. Uh -huh. I thought, that's not for me. It's, it's not, not my gonna, journey. It's not going to make any, it's not going to make me any money. Yeah. Might get me a good, good job somewhere working for somebody else. But sure. as I highlighted earlier in the interview, oh. that, that doesn't give the security. Exactly. So exactly. I thought, well, why not build your own, your mm. own security? Yeah. Which obviously I've done, so you certainly have. That's how we got into um, property, and the, the letting agency started in 1992. Right, fantastic. So we've clocked, 30, believe it or not, August the eighth this year. There'll be a big party oh. all that weekend because we'll have done. 30 years. Unbelievable. And that, pff, yeah. I mean, I can imagine just half the stories with that. I mean, my God, the well, things you must have seen. And yeah. the, uh, my brain's already awash with thinking about all the changes in the laws, all the changes in the marketplace and property itself, you know, just the actual units themselves and different designs and everything. It's just um, amazing what you've clocked up there. Uh, you you, me you mentioned the, the famous Mr. McFadden a couple of times. Yeah. He now pops into my head when I say letting agents because yeah. one of the things he's constantly saying is that the most underrated people in the property world the most underpaid people in the property world are letting agents it's absolutely yeah. letting agents I'm, I'm assuming you could attest to that how much work you have to put <coughs> in and how much you t how much of the pain and the noise you take away from landlords I mean I know from a landlord's position the amount of time that saved me and the headaches and the grief and everything else Yeah, but you've well, actually been doing the work well, definitely, yeah. yeah. I mean, when we started early doors, you did not see... You saw a little bit of legislate, legislation. Right. But nothing like what you've got now with yeah. electrical certificates and EPCs and yeah. right to rent and, you know, I could give you... I could fill your blackboard oh, up with, totally. a, with a list of it. Yeah. And, and still, um, surprisingly, a lot of landlords think, oh, if I do this myself... I'm going to save 10% or yeah. whatever the fee is. But those sort of people with respect to them, and, and, and this, isn't, this is just an observation I've seen with some people in PMW, they think, oh, well, actually, I won't bother getting a painting and decorator in. Yeah. Or I can, I can wallop that room out myself. Yep. I can manage my own property. Yep. And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> I can't remember the last time I had a paintbrush in my hand. <laughs> I'm sure Paul McFadden's the, <laughs> the same. Yeah. And you think, actually, how many hours have you spent managing your property? How many hours have you spent decorating it? Yeah. You know, when surely that time, to quote Paul, you should be working on the business, yes. not in the business. Yes. And those were, I remember those words from Paul McFadden on the first time. I came on Prodigy and I thought that was really well summed up. Because mm -hmm. you've seen it, you know. You I've know seen exactly it. what letting yeah. agents are doing. And you know you're, you're also a business owner. And the reason you were able to grow things and expand things is by thinking like a business owner. Not to let someone try to do some short-term cuts and save 10% here and save something on a painter. And no, no, no. That's not, that's not a business owner. That's someone messing about with the pennies and trying to, you know, scrimp well, yeah. and scrape here and there. You're thinking bigger than that, above Definitely. the business, moving things around. I'm going to sell these shops and one, one, one. That's an asset I'm buying. 
I'm going to bring these people in and connect with them and become you know, my network, you know, that you spoke about. That's fantastic. You think you, you saw a lot of that from your uncle as well that you mentioned? Um, was he kind of good at managing people <laughs> and things and bringing yeah, them together? Yeah, he, he was very much a people's person. Was he? And it? I think when he, when he got the shop and he saw this opportunity to buy this cafe on, on the seafront at Mumbles, actually, I'm sure it's still there in yeah. the, on the Welsh coast there, Swansea. Brilliant. I think he, he, he I think I've picked up some of his vision, yeah. if you like, because you it's, it is quite amazing. I saw it the other week out of interest, there was a property up for sale and I just thought, it was with an agent, I thought, I'll just go and have a nose. This, this looks like a bit of a wreck. I suppose right. the world and his wife will be after it. <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't actually finish up buying it. Right. But what was intriguing was when I was walking around this property, there was probably six other lots of people going around, um, right. as, as is quite common now, nowadays, sure. anything comes up for sale. Yeah. And what was intriguing was you got this young, I say young, they might have been mid, mid twenties, thirties, clearly young couple, potentially first time buyers. She'd got a head in her hands. Oh my God, look at the state of that. God, I didn't, I didn't know people had lining paper anymore and look at these carpets. And I could see the, the color draining from her partner's face. And they walked out through the door. Right. And there was a couple of others like that. But, but me, and I'm sure a lot of people on Prodigy the same, you think it's not how it is now, it's how it can be. Yes. And it's surprising how many people will view a property and, oh, yeah. no, there's this wrong, there's that wrong. Well, yeah. maybe that's the price <laughs> because that's the price it is. Exactly. So they don't have vision yes. and they don't have the potential to turn it round, really. Yeah, exactly. And you're, you're good at seeing that because what you're doing is with all of these assets and you've done so many projects, it's adding value. You bring value, Correct. so you're, you're bringing yeah. value to the person you, you know you're buying it from. You're bringing value with all the trades that you you know are organising, helping work in the place, and you're bringing value to the actual asset itself because then that's producing an income for you. You know, and that's, that's a business owner. That's a yeah. real business owner. It's fantastic. When you when you're building up the the whole kind of letting side of the puzzle and building that empire, just bit by bit, and sometimes steadily, sometimes really quickly, and bringing on staff and so on and so forth. What are the biggest challenges for you, would you say, you know, looking back over all that time? Uh, the biggest challenges, I, I suppose, like every, every agent, you you try to perhaps run before you can walk. You, <laughs> you need to get more and more landlords. Um, but that, that came in, in time um, and you can get a, I, I'm a great believer in making your own look and you can get, but you can get a bit of look on the way mm. we were using this guy who was a sort of a plumbing merchant merchant i wasn't aware that he was a, a landlord but ah. a contact of his who was a builder said oh you want to use um, this agent oh are they any good oh, how are you getting on with them oh i'm not so sure i've been running them myself and and blah de blah anyway eventually came on board and it was uh, almost a champagne moment he was said yeah 30, 30 properties Whoa, the one in goal. one hit, Just in one hit, <laughs> uh, on a recommendation of an existing customer. Wow. And then it just whew, spiraled fantastic. from there. Um, so, but in terms of challenge, challenges, and I'm sure every business has it, it it's getting the right staff as mm. well. Because yeah. as, as you grow, you, whereas initially you're in, you're on the dining room table, you've got no option but to do everything yourself. Yeah. But as you grow and we've got these other 30 properties and that led to others, you've got to say, right, you know, we, we need some more staff. Yeah. And even today, um, we've got some very good staff, mm -hmm. but it can still be a challenge to People sort of isn't it? train them up. <laughs> yeah. You know, can they be um, sort of reliable and on time and this this, that and the other and we're not sure. looking for perfection but I, yeah. I think that's a little bit of a challenge but one, once once you've got them mm -hmm. um, generally they've been 
that have been pretty pretty uh, loyal. You, you get that um, payback, yeah, exactly. Because you've put the investment in, you're, you're investing right. in them, but not just salaries. It's it's just time. It's giving you a, you know your a download of some of your experience. You know when you're mm -hmm. training them. And listen, this is how you could have dealt with that, and maybe the next time do such and such instead. Ah, oh, right, okay, I never thought of that. You know, and then it comes back mm -hmm. to you. Then you've actually trained them to a level where. I might go back to that seaside again actually this weekend, you know, well, I might yeah. just head off. <laughs> That's fantastic, absolutely brilliant. So the, getting the, the chap with the, the 30 and the one goal, would you say that's one of the kind of major milestones? Was there uh, others it, that popped early, out of your head? Early, early days, yeah, that yeah. was probably one of the major milestones. Mm -hmm. But what the <coughs> letting agency did in the early years for, for myself and my late wife was we were able to expand our own portfolio See. because I'd got an income off the the original, if you call it, eight properties, the right. original one and a half, two, plus the six I got off the betting shops. Yes. That was eight. That was, okay, we weren't dan dancing and having fancy holidays, but it was a livable wage. You've got a good foundation. Yeah. yeah. Um, so consequently, what I, I did, which quite amazed a few people that knew me. I went for about four years and never drew a penny out of the letting agency business. Wow. I ploughed it all, some of it back in to develop the agency, uh -huh. but the majority of it, I thought, right, let's go and get some more properties. Get some more. Get, some more, get some more. And at the time I got a very good lender, Nat West. Uh -huh. And, um, they must have had a lot of confidence in me because they said, get on with it, here's a million and a half. And Fantastic. that was over 20 years ago when wow. obviously you, you can buy, <laughs> you could be buying. So obviously that, um, the portfolio went, if you like, in tandem with the, with the letting agency. The they, were, they were sort of growing together. Yeah. Because my target was the, um, which I've achieved, if I can get 20 properties paid for, mm -hmm. then really that's Sorted. that's happy days. Yeah. Um, and I, I, whereas I felt there's no guarantee um, that what what's the asset on a, a letting agency, it's goodwill. Mm. Sure. How do you price goodwill? Yeah. It just depends. Yeah. Somebody, I'm generalizing, somebody could come into town and take all your business away because they're, they're letting properties at half the price you are. Yep. So I felt from that angle, mm -hmm. um, although letting agencies have become pretty valuable, there was a limit to how far that would go. Gotcha. But I, I felt in terms of properties mm -hmm. we own personally, that was if if you like a more a more solid yeah. foundation. So That's we've the, not we've the, not the, looked the golden egg, egg, eggs getting laid there. Yeah, for you and you alone. Well, that, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, uh, and as I say to pe people, new landlords in or whatever, I say, well, name me an investment where you can get an income. That's obviously the rental income mm -hmm. plus capital growth. Yeah. Because when we started in ninety two. Uh, we were getting a rental income, but at that time, property was jogging along. Right. It, it hadn't really even entered my head, believe it or not, right. that we're going to get some capital growth. Right. So, but by God, we've had some capital growth because oh, properties I was getting for 20s and the 30,000s then, yep. you can imagine they're sort of 150, 180 now. Yeah. So, and obviously we've had, 20 odd years rental exactly, income out time. of it as well. Exactly. And you're getting both, you're getting both worlds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It really is an amazing investment vehicle, isn't it? It's just phenomenal. That's right. You know, specifically in the UK and the market and, and supply and demand and so on and so forth. It's an incredible thing to invest in. Whether you, it's really full on, hands on, this is my business, like yourself, building a letting agency, or someone just listening in, well, don't fancy that side of it, but what I'm hearing Robert saying about building my own portfolio, oh. either way, you know, it's an incredible asset, and it's an amazing Definitely. vehicle for yourself that you can build. What's your kind of uh, plans or longer term plans with the, the letting side of the puzzle? Can you see that just continuing continue to grow, develop it, sell it off? Um, What's your thoughts? It's developing very, very well, but yeah. um, I think we touched on it before. You've 
met my business partner Isabel. Yes, who's, who's just a little bit younger than me. There's not a lot. Couple in of it, months. But, yeah, couple, couple of months. months. Yeah, <laughs> and, um, basically she um, bought a stake out within right. within the letting agency. Brilliant. So um, in a way, being in my sixties, still still holding on to them, I <laughs> I um, sort of took a bit of a back seat. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm still involved. I'm still a director. I'm still a shareholder. Brilliant. But really, I've sort of let her ninety percent of the time sort of take over, and, and just... she's sort of building it up. And then, brilliant. Um, at some point in the not too di- distant future, because there's got to be an end goal for her. She's got the yeah. opportunity to actually um, buy me out mm-hmm. completely, mm-hmm. which is which is fine, you know, because I. I, it's one of those deals that both sides are very happy with and we've exactly. got a very good working relationship yeah. and, it, and it's nice that the the company name that mm. we that we, we we started MD properties the D stands for Diane which was my late wife ah. it's nice that 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 name is carrying on yeah. whereas I did say to Isabel I was approached actually by a, a, a nationwide company We'll right. buy you out, and don't quote me to the the figure. There was, there was a little bit, potentially a little bit more in it selling sure. selling to them. Sure. But I wanted to keep the name going, and yeah. secondly, if I'd have had the golden check off them, I would have been completely out. Good. And I felt, which if you were sat here today, Isabel needed my support, so I yes. I, I carried on for an initial 12 months full time and slowly sort of Fantastic. stepped away but that that's given me a bit more free time and yeah you know to enjoy yourself i love that absolutely brilliant and she has, she's learned a ton of stuff from you you know you you've then yeah. brought her up it's not just everything you're doing with the business and yourself and the portfolio and people you're helping and stuff but Actually, you know, Isabel just growing up, learning those tricks for herself, becoming her own business person in her own right. It's, it's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. What What's the biggest things that you've seen changing? I mean, through that whole letting agency empire that you've grown there, you mentioned at the start, there was, there was almost nothing legislative-wise at the start. And now it's just incredible. It's just a wash yeah. with regulations and tenancy agreements that change just every week. You know, different. What's that? Oh no, I've got a different one. I've got this one. I've got that one. We've got the gas safety. We've got the electricals. We've got all sorts of things going. What's your overall thoughts on it? Has it been mostly a good thing? Mostly a bad thing? Is it super complicated these days? How would you analyze yeah, it? Yeah, uh, some things have been good. I I was probably. Um, one of the people as long ago as 12 years ago with the National Landlords Association, who I'm, I'm a, a member of, mm-hmm. um, to actually say, look, we're doing gas certificates. I know in possibly the chances are less, I think there should be electrical safety certificate. Right. So I was one of the people that was probably pushing for that at, yeah. a, at a national level. And... Um, so in a way, I'm pleased it it has come, but it is another it is another cost for um, it's got the down, a landlord. Yeah. Um, yeah. But of, of course, everything else has come into into play now. Uh, the big big one at the moment, of course, is energy performance certificates. Yes. I mean, they yes. they when when we started, they were unheard of. Yeah. Um, so. And this is something, yeah. one of the many things you've been helping a lot of people in the protege tribe with actually, just reminding them and just saying, you know, remember and check this out because you've seen this coming in, you know, a gentle phasing in of if it's not this standard, not this level, you're not going to be able to rent it out. You know, so you've been able, it's another thing you've been aware of. You've seen that creeping and phasing in of these things, haven't you? That's right, yeah. Um, I don't know whether it's going to 100% go through i think the the government's trying to strike a balance that hang on a minute if we insist in a couple of three years that uh, epcs at the moment you have to be an e in england to to let it out Mm -hmm. but there's talk of even bypassing the d and going to the 
the sea. Yeah. And obviously a lot of landlords, the accidental ones or those that might have inherited a house are saying, oh, Jesus Christ, this is, this is just too much. I'm out. And there will be a lot of people, I read an article this morning where they're expecting a lot of landlords to exit mm. the market. Yeah. Now, is that good or is it, is it bad? Exactly. For those yeah. that are still in the, the race or going on uh, Prodigy and thinking, well, actually, I, I can get, you know, this could open up for some more, yeah. some more deals. And yep. of course, supply and demand mm -hmm. uh, year on year rents have gone up about 10 percent mm -hmm. right across the the uk maybe slightly less in wales mm -hmm. um, so d demand is just increasing all the time so it, yeah. it, it's a good business to get into yeah but with all the legislation um and and keeping properties in a, in good condition if you like then the margins have become a bit more wafer thin yes if you've but not bought good enough to begin if with you've not bought good enough really if, you, if you've not bought right to start with yeah so this is the the advantage of anybody going on a course such as prodigy they can learn the tricks mm -hmm. and they can say well actually that property yeah, if it, if it got in the wrong hands, it would be 150 all day long. But, mm. you know, I, I got to know the owner and I bought it for 125. I'm, I've got a nice discount. Yeah. So technically you're making money from day one yes. on a capital growth basis. Mm -hmm. Secondly, if, if you can, as you said, with a property add value, mm -hmm. then straight away that's another win. And hey-ho, the, um, the rents are going up. So... It's a win-win situation. Well. Yeah, exactly. So, um, and, and I, I haven't in my 29 years seen so much demand for rental property. Mm -hmm. If we've got a property on our books now above seven to 10 days, uh, I'm on the phone. Why, why, is, that is, right? why is that sticking? <laughs> What's gone what's, wrong? What's the problem here? As somebody, as somebody over overpriced it, which occasionally can sure can happen. Yeah. Um, but generally, or is it in? You know, does it does it want doing up or mm -hmm. refurbing or whatever? Yeah, yeah. So um, from the landlord side, let me ask you this because it, this is so cool with the amount of experience and the. The coverage you've got and things because you've you're the landlord and you're the letting agent as well you can see all these things any tips and tricks for landlords picking the right agent now if they're down in the midlands there they need to go to md that's that case closed but <laughs> elsewhere yeah. elsewhere in the uk is there kind of certain things you would oh would always <clears throat> make sure the agent does blah 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 i would always kind of check if such and such any kind of things you would share off your head top of your yeah, head yeah i i i think if you I mean, Glasgow, I'm, I'm not well up on sure. Glasgow agents. I assume there's a lot of uh, perhaps what I call nationwide groups like mm. Connells. Have you got a Connells? The kind here? of franchises and things that you're thinking of. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, or, or major companies. I would probably be looking for an, an agent that's um, obviously got good reviews, mm -hmm. same as you wouldn't go to a hotel if it got a bad review. Right. But then I'd probably... Um, and I don't say this biasly, I would probably drill down to somebody that might be an independent, mm -hmm. but also he's going to be hungry. Because if he's a, an independent like we are, mm -hmm. uh, or even a franchisee, mm -hmm. he's going to go the extra mile. Yes. Whereas like if that. you get, with respect, a, a bigger company, mm -hmm. um, oh, hang on, it's five o'clock. Yeah. We're closed now, yep. whereas we have been successful, in my opinion, and me personally, mm -hmm. by going the extra mile. Yes, and it's so noted. In, so even in the early days, we thought, right, if, if a tenant's got an issue, his boiler's broke down or what, mm -hmm. he needs that support of an agent. He wouldn't obviously get it if he owned the property. Yeah. So we had an uh, emergency phone line. It wasn't five o'clock, that's it. Mm. We had it till ten o'clock. 10 o'clock at night brilliant and now isabel blesser has turned it to 24 hours has she whoa yeah. but landlords like that and obviously tenants do yeah um as long as they don't 
abuse it. Abuse because, it no. um, but so we, you know, we're from that angle. Mm. So I think you you probably need need to drill down and think right, which which agent is hungry? Mm. Have you had a good uh, report? You might know a fellow landlord. Oh, I actually use them. Get a reference. What what better recommendation? Yeah. Than, may, <clears throat> than somebody saying, oh, I'm away up to Edinburgh next week. Any ideas on a, a hotel you'd recommend? Yep. Don't go there. Yep. Rubbish. Breakfast was cold. <laughs> you go there, everything's spot on. Yep. Clean rooms, nice ambiance. Mm -hmm. Same and thing with an agent. Same thing with an, with an agent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Opinions on the market, the market in general, property in general, where you see things going, because it's a crazy time just now, you know, when <coughs> we're is, chatting yeah. here today, you know, the just prices and viewing, you mentioned you go to a viewing and you're just surrounded by people, all sorts of things, where do you see things going, you know, interest rates starting to creep uh, up bit by bit, etc. Yeah, in, in terms of property values, I think um, they'll continue to rise this year, Right, but it can't go on indefinitely sure so there could be a little bit of a correction in the market perhaps in 12 months time mm -hmm. in in my opinion mm -hmm. who who has got a crystal ball <laughs> you know we we don't really <laughs> really really know but it's going to be down to affordability as well because if you know if people are are buying and like you say they've been hit with interest rate rises and it's the same yeah. for landlords they're going to be exactly. paying more money paying more interest to um, to borrow. Yep. So I think there could be a little bit of a correction in the in the market in about 12 months time. Right. What I don't see happening is there'll be any less um, tenants about. I right. think the boom in tenants after properties will continue. Mm. And I think that's already been proved by with a lot of tenants now they're worried that if they move, are they going to find anywhere? <clears throat> if they do, yeah. the prices has gone up so much so. The latest figures, hot off the press. Here we go. <laughs> this and <coming> morning <laughs> was that. Excuse me. The since 2017 uh -huh. to present day um, doesn't sound a lot, but when you go over all the tenancies, mm. the average length of time of a tenancy is increased by five months. Right. Really? So that suggests people are stopping and we're, we're, we're noticing that. You're uh, seeing that on the kind yeah. of float floor, are you? And, and one of the reasons it, it's twofold, uh -huh. if tenant A in our agency says, right, okay, oh, I'm interested in this other property with, an, with another agent, uh -huh. yeah, he'll, he'll get a view in, I'm sure. Right. But there could be 10 others there. Yes. So there's no guarantee just because he's renting with us and yeah. hopefully everything's okay. He's going to he's going to get that property. Yeah. And then the other thing is as well if a tenant is in situ without boring you there's a li there's a limit to how much the rent you can put up sure. how much you can put it up. If the property becomes empty um uh, I've got an example of one of my own it was 6 650 mm -hmm. became empty we just give it a quick lick over decor wise and i said um let's try it at 775 which was an increase of 125 pounds and wow. people are thinking Phew. and i'll be honest i didn't think it would work right. but hey ho Done. it went within three days Did it? at the new price now had wow. the other tenants been in at 650 yeah we we would have been uh, limited. I think the maximum is ten percent yeah. that you could put rent up anyway. So mm -hmm. you would have got nowhere near the figure yeah. that I'm now attaining. It's incredible. Uh, it really is incredible what you're seeing going on. It's absolutely amazing. I want to ask you about uh, current projects, things you've got bubbling away just now, because you've, you've done so much through your whole journey. But let's have a wee think about some of the things that you're working with just now. We'll share that with people, uh, whatever details you can anyway. Uh, and the fact is that I, I, this is one of the things I really love about you. I love the fact that you help so many people and just around you. The likes of Isabel in your business, the likes of all the people in the Protege tribe and stuff, constantly answering questions, giving wee tips and tricks and things like that. The biggest thing I love about you, Robert, for day one of meeting you, 
is your open-mindedness, your willingness to learn more and more and more. I mean, we had the whole journey there about your three certificates you've ticked off in the past, <laughs> you know, which right, is brilliant. Yeah. But you're not that... There's this guy, he's not this young, spotty kid coming in and not having a clue about anything. No, no. We're talking about a guy who's mature, clever, grown up, backgrounds, experience, knowledge, business, 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 but never stops learning. Never stops wanting to know, what's that there? What's that strategy? What's that tactic? Why have you got that? Is that just in you? Is that from uh, your uncle? I, what, what is that? I think it's become uh, originally from a hard-working um, sort of family background. Is it? And al also, obviously, um, I suppose you could say if you work working hard doesn't doesn't necessarily always make you money, but if you work smart and you've got a bit of vision and, and you can see potential in something that... Mm. that I believe I saw not only with property, I saw with my betting shops and mm. originally the waste paper business then, yeah. then you can sort of um, go for it if, it if you like. But yeah, it's good to learn and I think um, there's a lot of people sort of in the 60s, similar age to me, oh, you silly so-and-so, you, you're still working, oh, we've been retired. I bumped into one of these individuals only the other the other week. I won't name him, but, <laughs> but he said, "This was in the the other week." He said, "Oh, thank God the winter's over." I said, "Really?" He said, "Yeah." He said, "Those are long dark days." He said, "I don't know what I don't know what to do with myself." He said, "Now the summer's here. I'm all right. I've got me allotment. I can do a bit." And I thought, do you know what? I won't. I don't ever want to be in that position mm. so um yeah, as a friend those, said to those me aren't phrases i'm going to hear from your mouth <laughs> no There's no way well as a friend said to me uh he said robert retirement it ain't all it's cracked up to be uh -huh. and i think it was right uh -huh. and i think it's just striking the the balance yeah, exactly. really yeah you don't want to work you yourself know. into the ground but you've no. got this this curiosity you've got this fun part of your life you're just wanting to what is that how do you do that you just you want to keep learning i love that absolutely yeah. love that about you and the, the things that you're using that brain with now then what, what kind of things you got in the go at the moment yeah we've got uh, doing stuff. i've purchased a couple of properties on uh this year right. so i need to get me skates on because that's only two and we're in month five so <laughs> i've got to ca catch up with all the other people and what have you but um one was a deal i would have never ever done had i not been on paul mcfadden prodigy um it was an assisted sale right the one you've been which, speaking about yeah, yeah gotcha. which i touched on oh, um yeah. basically I'd never never heard of an assisted sale till I came <laughs> on to Prodigy, so I've actually done a back to front one on 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 this one. Just mm -hmm. the, the sort of background is um, the lady was sort of being moved off to a home um, because she'd sadly got dementia. The family wanted to sell the property. Mm -hmm. um, it turned out down the road it had got red ash, so it wasn't mortgageable. Um, so basically I came up with a, a cash deal to buy it off them mm -hmm. but I actually said right once I've got we're going to resell it so we're going to flip it once I've got my cut out of it I'm prepared to give you guys 50% over and above that so they may walk away with 5,000 who who knows we we don't actually yeah, know the way the market but, is my goodness yeah so yeah. but the reason behind that was um looking at the moral and the ethical way i've, I've done it and structured it yeah. was as one of the family members said said to me does touch wood lives a couple of years we won't see a penny out of that yeah. house oh won't you no because it'll all go in home care fees which are about five thousand um a month yeah as in in england um if you haven't got cash assets you normally you, you're sort of forced to sell yeah a house so that's what we've done Fantastic. so we've we've sort of uh refurbing it top to bottom we've got a plastered head to foot new gas central heatings in new boiler just had the kitchen delivered. We've got the bathroom to do, carpets to go down, and say it quickly, but 
a few weeks we should be on the on the market with it Fantastic. so that's um that was one that we bought very very early this year Fantastic. and then the other property i purchased um was that actually through um a sort of off-market connection if i can call it that mm -hmm. where the lady was in uh, a bit of trouble financially mm -hmm. and she wasn't in the best of health anyway and it's one actually i discussed with uh, sean mcintyre when i was here recently mm -hmm. um run it past him because i think i'm a very caring sort of genuine guy yeah. and I, I felt, am I taking advantage of this woman because I was basically offering 20% below market value. Mm -hmm. um, she agreed it and it went to solicitors. But even then I'm thinking, am I doing the right thing? You know, sure. is, 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 this, is this right? But then I get a call from my solicitor saying, if we don't complete on this, Robert, nobody nobody's going to get a penny out of it no the option. poor lady that owns it's going to be repossessed yep you're not going to get the property yeah and i had structured the sums that she actually cleared all the debts Brilliant. and got a few thousand As well. for, for herself oh, I love so it. when that came across to me putting that light yeah i thought i didn't i didn't feel any guilt at all in actual yeah. fact turning it on its head i've done her a favor absolutely absolutely but to somebody on the outside outside of prodigy group they'd be thinking oh he's he's had that and he's uh, he's ripped somebody off mm. but nothing no. further than the truth Correct. and bear in mind i had to come up with the pound notes as well to begin with exactly to begin with, yeah because totally. um, her advisor was worried that if it got into an estate agent's window mm -hmm. okay how long would it take to market it to get it and yeah. within a day or two i'd got it in solicitors fantastic so, and, and obviously it was purchased off market mm -hmm. that's outstanding you know see those two examples that kind of perfectly sums up with real world examples everything i love about you because You've got the brain there and the creativity. You're always learning different things, and you're thinking, "How can I solve this wee puzzle here?" You know, you're not, you're not shutters down. Oh, I don't understand anything else. No, no. What's going on here? Tell me everything, because I'm, I'm going to solve this problem somehow. I love that part of the puzzle. I love the part of the point. You've got heart of gold. You've got that legal, ethical, and moral approach, right? How can I help this family here and the poor mums getting into care and stuff? How can I help them out? Right? Okay, this lady with financial troubles. How can I? She's got no other options. Things are about to collapse on her. This is terrible. How can I structure this that everybody can win from it? I bloody love that. That's, that mm -hmm. says a lot about you. And that's why yeah. you've had the success that you've had through all these years. You know, it's, it's just, it's testament to the man you I absolutely love it. And we love having you just around the group and people to learn off you and just to collaborate with you, network with you, you know, all sorts of things. It's just, it's a tremendous testament to you. It really is. Thank you. I want to ask you a final one with all of that in mind, probably. Because uh, I want to be respectful of your time. I know we, we've dragged you up and over the border and all sorts <laughs> so of things, right. this poor man. No problem. Over all that stuff, that amazing experience, all these decades of knowledge and everything you've learned and the different businesses and growing things and challenges and milestones, what do you think you've learned about yourself? What have you learned about Robert McFarlane, would you say, through this life journey? Um, I, I would say I've, I, I've learned, uh, I suppose, how to be successful, really, um, and have belief in yourself, but I've obviously... I've worked very hard. It hasn't, it hasn't come easy. Yep. If that's a, but I think it's having uh, confidence, and I think the biggest life changer, and well, one of the life changes, and you can re relate to this because I actually read this book about thirty odd years ago. Was a Magic of Thinking Big by oh. Doctor Swartz. Yeah, recommend anybody in Prodigy wants to to read that and. It just, in fact, I'm going to actually read it again in the next in the next few weeks. Did you now, do that, now the you, football you, season's you finished. You go back to it, yeah. I've that's got a chance to actually <laughs> read that again, and I just find 
for me, it's not a book you could recommend to to everybody, mm. but what I find is it helps me think differently. Mm. It's given me, I've always, I think, had the belief in myself, but that's given me an extra vision and it refocuses you. It, it's, it's a bit like, and I, I'm sure everybody listening to this can relate to this. You go on Prodigy and you walk through there at the end of the four or five days, whatever, and you're absolutely buzzing. But the thing is, three months down the road, mm. have you still got that same buzz? Yes. A lot of people have. Yep. Some will have fallen by the wayside, yep. and that's nothing to do with Paul McFadden's course. It, it's highly Just recommendable. Life gets in that's life. Folks. Yeah. But yeah. what I found it with this uh, book is it tops you up, it gives you that uh, buzz again, right. that belief, and you just think, do you know what, this This is how I should be managing my life, if you like, so, Brilliant. there we go. Fair thinking big, the magic of thinking big. Here you go, another, another top tip for this man. You've been yeah. uh, awash with them today, so you have dear listeners and viewers. I told you, I told you this would happen. Uh, he's an, am an amazing man, amazing experience, so much success that he's grown up, but he's not just kept that to himself, he's shared it, he keeps sharing it with other people, and he's people that he's helped in property, people around him, people he's collaborated with, all sorts of things. Robert, for your time today, helping these folks on This Week in Property, thanks a million. Thank you very Thank much. You. You're welcome. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show as much as I did. Remember, with the guests that you just saw, go into the show notes for the page because all of the links are there so that you can get in touch and to get more information. And talking about getting more information, more guests, more insights, more knowledge, etc., make sure you're subscribed. Get the subscription done, get the notifications on, and then we'll always keep in touch with you every single time a brand new show is going to come out. So thanks for tuning to This Week in Property.